Check one, two, one, two, check, check, check. Talk to me, let me, let me hear about it. Sounds good. All right, so you ready to start this? Let's do it. So let's start from the beginning. Tell me about your season. All right, y'all, here we are. Welcome back to the channel. We are at the shores of Lake Mitchell, my home lake on the Coosa River. And uh, we're out here doing a little fishing today, but I just wanted to do a recap video of the 2023 Bass Pro Tour season and talk about next season and, you know, go through the schedule and uh, see what tournaments I like, which ones that I don't like, see what I think might play out. I don't really know, but just kind of rewind on this season. Um, I would grade my season on the 23 Bass Pro Tour I don't know, Brett, what would you grade it? B plus. I'm almost at an A minus. Almost at an A minus. Yeah. I mean, I graduated college with a B plus, so I guess that's good. That's good. No. Actually, I graduated with a C minus. <laughs> I did do that. But hey, didn't nobody ask me my grades. Uh, we're going on a damn tangent here again. Nobody asks you your grades. If you're applying for a job and you got a diploma and you're like, hey, I, I graduated with a marketing degree, do they ask you if you made a 71. I just want to know you all. Yeah, end the story. So it was a it was a dang good season. Started off kind of slow. Went to Florida as always. Florida's a daggum wild card. You don't know if you're gonna catch them in Florida or not. It, it just flip a coin. I feel like I'm at a blackjack table, blind, just hitting, hitting and missing. I don't even know. Hit, hit me, hit me, hit me. I don't know. So uh, that was Florida. But other than that, man, we made. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how many tournaments we got. Seven. Seven stages, but nine overall if you include heavy hitters. And we made every knockout round, uh, championship round at Red Crest, made every knockout round except Florida at Kissimmee. So I'd say that's pretty good. Um, had a lot of really good qualifying tournaments, man, or qualifying rounds. Had, had some really good ones. I mean, we won a round and, and, and finished in the top five and like three or four of them. And, led a few days but those qualifying rounds don't really matter i got to do a better job of managing fish um our tournaments are two-day events essentially they're six days long but they're two-day events they're qualifying i mean the qualifying rounds but the knockout round the championship round is the only ones that even matter so i gotta do a little bit better job of managing fish um i, I did manage fish i went practicing and they just kept on biting my hook and they just wouldn't quit biting my stuff you know and it is what it is but anyway um, I'm not going to go through all the stages of what we did this year. I'm just going to grade it a B plus. I'd say that. Um, I went, you know, I went into this season, you know, we changed back to five fish and there was all this controversy of, uh, we're going back to five. It's going to flip up. The same guys called them, the same guys that know how to bass fish. They're going to continue bass fishing. I don't know how to bass fish, but, uh, we did pretty good. We did pretty good. Um, caught some big bags. I think my favorite tournament of the season was Douglas. It was brutally cold. And like, I still remember them biting my jig. That was cool. I could slow down. That was one of the biggest aspects of this season. I, I, our takeaways is I can slow down now. I can get very methodical. You know, I can, instead of burning down the bank trying to get a bite, I can really pick apart something and try to get a big bite so i, I love that so um but anyway going into next season oh, hang on whoa if you could have one take back for this past season what would it be honestly if i have one take back i would take back um i would take back of course florida everybody would take back that flop of a tournament you know i I had a good practice in Florida and it just sizzled. I mean, you, yeah, you, but what would you have done different? I would have went and flipped on Kissimmee. <laughs> I, I'm just not, you gotta understand though, when we go into these tournaments, a lot of people, they don't really play into somebody's uh, personality, I guess you would say. My personality, my fishing personality. And I'm gonna make a video, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna make a video about this you know, coming up soon, you gotta understand, you know, people's personalities and you gotta look at the schedule at hand and understand like, hey, this is gonna be a slow tournament. This is gonna be a, you're not gonna get many bites. You know, you have to go into that. I sometimes, I'm slowing down the older I get. Florida, dude, it's so hard for me to just slow down and go flip a lily pad. Good Lord, it is. I, I mean, it's hard for me to just go pitch over there with a little stick bait on an eighth ounce head and let it soak, 
it's just so painfully tough for me to do that. So I'm ripping and snatching and throwing chatter baits and jerk baits and you name it. But anyway, I'll take back that. I would slow down way more. Um, Murray was a really disappointing finish for me. I've never seen what happened in that tournament happen. Dude, I was crushing them. Don't have any excuses. I was about to go into something, but I'm not. There is no excuses. I did get poached this year. I would say that several, several tournaments. We're leaving that in the video. Y'all can deal with it. That's just a natural part of life. You, you're gonna get out here. There's a ton of people on the water. They see you reeling a bass. Dagum Locust figured he'd cut up a little bit. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen the poaching. Have so many top fives in qualifying rounds. And not make a championship. And not make a championship. It's unbelievable. Well, Douglas was a... I didn't really like Douglas because we went to Cherokee and we wasn't on the body of water for five days on Cherokee. And and we switched lakes and I got really dialed in at Douglas and I got on a good deal and it didn't mean anything at all. And then St. Clair, these are a quick little story. This is story time. St. Clair, I'm out there crushing them. And uh, for the life of me, that knockout round day, I still had a great day. I had 21 and a half pounds. And I needed one ounce to make championship round one ounce. And I've caught thousands, or I wouldn't say thousands, but I've caught hundreds of four pounders in my life, smallmouth. And I needed one ounce and I missed that championship round. And I just won the qualifying rounds. And I ran new water. I try to be very methodical and try to find new water and manage fish. and. You know, I made a, a little video um, earlier in the season talking about the margin of error, and and you know, us going back to five. I mean, I think anybody can agree that 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 margin is very small. You lose one good fish, that's the difference you win in the tournament, because essentially you have to be in the top ten to win the tournament. I mean, I was in twelfth place with twenty one and a half pounds, but I'm three pounds out of the lead going into the final day. You know, that's very doable so uh we're gonna slow down next season and we're gonna dip into this schedule a little bit we're gonna talk about it to 23 season i'm not complaining man i got out there got to do what i love to do man i caught them a bunch of different ways this season it was it was really cool because at red crest i got in this 20 xp and uh so i had ran the xrt last year by triton as a 21 foot boat and this was all new boat, new boat, new everything to me. You know, I hadn't ran a 20 footer in a long time. And I got in this boat at Redcrest and I hadn't been running it a lot. It was the first tournament I actually fished out of it was at Redcrest. I made a top 10, but I will grade this boat a A plus plus. I would say, wouldn't you say Brett? fast and it's smooth. Brett has rode with me all season and he, he you know, he, he, he can tell you straight up. Hey, a perfect example. We were at St. Clair and then big waves. Remember them big waves? Yeah. You didn't get wet single one time. No, no. It didn't ever crash on the front deck. It, it's, it's been a good boat. It was impressive. Yeah. And, and I, um, I may get Brett to chop out some of that footage. Everybody's like, well, how fast is the boat? Now keep in mind, we're keeping things relative. This is not an 85 mile an hour boat, yeah. you know, but with three people in and I was running 72. Yeah, with a, with an MLF camera guy and an official and you, all packed down tournament weight, 72 is impressive. That's really good, considering all the on these boats nowadays. Yeah. I mean, we got daggum four graphs. Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna talk about graphs later. We're gonna make a video about these graphs. Can't wait to get into that. Can't wait for somebody to comment on Cayuga. Oh yeah, speaking of Cayuga, I didn't even comment on Cayuga last season. There's gonna be somebody who didn't talk about Cayuga. Let's talk about Cayuga. Do uh, do I think Cayuga was an absolute, what's that word I'm looking for? Train wreck. Disaster. Yeah. Atrocity. Is that is that even a word? Do I think it was a train wreck? Yes. It was absolutely a train wreck. 100%. Everybody wants to say, we don't want to talk about Cayuga. I'll talk about Cayuga straight up. I think it was the biggest black eye in uh, Major League Fishing history. 100%. It was terrible. Terrible. Uh, I think that had to do with... Uh, the rule, how it was stated. I think it has to do with ethics. I think it has to do with uh, people trying to get an advantage. And it was just a bad deal, man. I don't agree on any of it. Never, never did, never will. Um, but I'm not here to enforce the rules. I can only say so much. 
and that's that's the thing you know everybody wants to get in there and be like oh okay you go okay you yes we we all knew it was bad but like what what can i do do i get on facebook or instagram or youtube and just complain and gripe and argue about it make a big scene and make a fool out of myself it is what it is i don't agree on our presidency but i'm not out there blowing it out in the whole world you know what i'm saying i'm just keeping it real so uh it's what it is you can agree or disagree but i did not like the way cayuga panned out i i really wanted to i did i slung gravel at that tournament i was very disappointed i was disappointed in the anglers i was disappointed in the league i just was so uh brett the bright spot was adrian brett knows yeah brett knows when i left that tournament i was mad i, t I got in the truck and i said we got highway robbed this week it was robbery yeah. so uh anyway that's my comment on cayuga um so now y'all can quit commenting on cayuga <laughs> that's my comment on cayuga um which was honestly i know i'm dragging on on this subject um it really, like, I, I kind of, it hit me kind of hard because I'd won there the year before, dude. I mean, like, like, that place has a special spot for me. Like, it has history for me. Like, I I felt like I was one of the guys, or I was the guy that exposed the smallmouth and how many of them there was. And, I mean, at that time of year, keep in mind, that then tournaments had been getting won that time of year on smallmouth for years you know that was one of the only times of the year when they really really played big time but that place was special to me i mean i got a trophy in my house that says cayuga on it and now every time we think about cayuga it was that tournament this year so it's kind of a stain i'm like that gum it yeah so anyway enough with that enough with the negativity i'm all about positivity and that's another thing i don't like feeding in the negativity all there's so much negativity in this world nowadays anyway I mean, my God, we talking about forward-facing sonar, we talking about Cayuga, we talking about all this. Let's just talk about something positive. And something positive is next year. We're looking forward, not backwards, okay? Next season, 2024. Damn, it's hard to believe it's 24. Uh, we're getting old. Unbelievable. Yep. Wow, what a life. 2024 season. Major League Fishing dropped the schedule. Um, I'm just going to scam through these real quick. I'm not going to go through each one. Toledo Bend, fe January 30th, February 4th. I think that's going to be early. That's going to be a wintertime hardcore tournament. Um, it may have a warm front, but I highly doubt it. Early February, that is a wintertime deal. It's going to be cold. Um, I do think that offshore fishing will play. Um, that lake has a lot of timber in it. I'm looking forward to that one. That's what I love doing, and we're going to go do that. I'm not going to flip a jig down the bank. I'm just not. May have to, but uh, that's going to be a great tournament. I think there's going to be there'll be a couple ten pounders weighed in that tournament. That winter time is when you catch your biggest bass. So be on the lookout for Toledo Bend, Santee Cooper. Still early, February 20th through 25th. Santee has historically been a big fish factory in the spawn. This is one of the first pro angling tournaments that we've went there early, early, you know, pre-spawn. So uh, I think you're going to see some giants there. We're on the edge of it being really, really good. I mean, March in the south is phenomenal. We're 10 days early. So it depends on the front. Front may come in, front may not. So uh, Santee Cooper, that's going to be a good tournament. Red Crest, Lay Lake. Never been there before. Um, okay, we're on Lake Mitchell right now. Lay Lake is like right up there. All right, so I, a uh, quick little history lesson. I grew up 12 miles from Lay Lake, Lake Mitchell, and Lake Jordan. And they're like, well, how'd you live 12 miles from each? The top end of Jordan's 12 miles. The middle of Lake Mitchell's 12 miles. The bottom end of Lay is 12 miles away. Um, I, I caught my first spotted bass on um, the Coosa River on Lay Lake. I did. And uh, I remember it to this day. It was in a canoe. So I'm looking forward to that. That's Red Crest. Um, Kind of nervous about it kind of excited but kind of nervous so it's a great time of year march 14th through 17th great great tournament april 9th through 14th dale hollow we've all heard about dale hollow dale hollow is phenomenal i don't know about that time of year i'm hoping that that ain't gonna be spawning i don't know it's there will be some fish spawning in that tournament i feel like these national trails always try to follow the spawn um i don't really know why I'm not a big time spawning guy. I don't like catching them. I don't like poking around with them, doing all that. Um, 
it's not the best time of year to fish. Pre-spawn and post-spawn is typically where your biggest bags get weighed in. So. Turn the camera, turn the camera. Is that an otter? Turn the camera. Meh, meh. Beep, 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 beep. I just gave an otter a deer bleat. Call it how it is. Anyway, back to the video. Uh, <laughs> spawning tournaments. I have no idea why they want to follow these 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 lakes and these spawning tournaments. I don't understand it. Like it, it's like the whole national trail for 30 years are wanting to follow the spawn. Fish don't bite in the spawn. They, they they're garden. I mean, yeah, they'll bite, but they ain't they ain't not hungry. Anyway. I'm really excited about Dale Hollow. Never been there before. Giant smallmouth, big large mouth. The weights are in, in, unbelievable. Pretty cool. April 30th through May 5th, Lake Eufaula. Never been there in Oklahoma. Don't know nothing about it. Excited about it. I don't know. Y'all comment below. Heavy Hitters Kissimmee. We're back at Kissimmee, but at a different time of year, May 18th through 23rd. I fully expect that tournament to be similar to the same deal we did at Heavy Hitters a few years ago. Um, when JoJo won. There'll be some offshore fish. There'll be some flipping fish. I mean, that f fishing there in May is better than February. 100%. Stage 5, Chowan River. Ch Chowan, Chowan River. Never heard of it. I heard there's some mega bags there. Y'all comment below. Let us know. Is it phenomenal? Is it not? June 4th through 9th. Don't give us no info. Um, I don't know. Big bags, apparently. June 25th through 30th, James River, never been there. Don't know nothing about it. Chowan and James is Tidal Rivers. I've, I like tidal fisheries. I've fished one in my whole life. One, that's it. No, two. Fish two. I love current. I love, I understand it. And like, honestly, I don't think of a tidal chart. I literally look at the water and run the current. That's it. That's just what I like doing. So I hope we do good there. Stage seven, St. Lawrence River, probably my most exciting one of the year, August 6th through 11th. I love smallmouth fishing. That's the only tournament with smallmouth on the venue, okay? So I just gotta throw it out there, the elephant in the room. So y'all tired of staring at looking at graphs and catching five pound smallmouth? We only have one tournament next year doing it. Only one, that's it. One smallmouth derby, which I love St. Lawrence. It's probably my favorite place on planet Earth to go fishing. So we're going there, and that's going to wrap up the season. One thing I noticed about this year, um, I don't see a lot of offshore tournaments. I, I don't. James River, tidal shallow. Chowan, tidal shallow. Kissimmee, shallow. Stage 4, Lake Eufaula, April 30th. Spawning, Del Hollow, shallow, April, potentially mixture. Red Crest, shallow, May, March 14th. Toledo Bend, fairly deep, I'd say. Timber out, wintertime stuff. Santee Cooper, pretty much shallow. So that's the venues. That's the schedule. I'm excited about it. Um, that's going to wrap up this video. Just figured I'd give you all kind of a preload the next season and grade this season super excited about it um all right so what we're gonna do now is uh we just finished up that video tired of I'm, I'm so sorry that we bored y'all to death we're gonna go catch a fish um i think i'm gonna catch a fish and end this video so y'all can at least have one fish catch on here so that one person that's like less talking more fishing you got you what you wanted I love the comment section. Y'all comment below. I love the negativity. I love the positivity. Appreciate y'all tuning in next time. And uh, be on the lookout this coming up fall, man. We're going to get some videos rolling, rocking. We're going to uh, we're gonna keep fishing. That's just what we do. We love bass fishing. I'm out here today just fishing. It's hot. Oh, it's about to be hot here soon. So uh, we got out here early to shoot this video for y'all. I attempted on shooting this video in my shop, but nobody wants to be inside cooped up like Post Malone. You know what I'm saying? So we're outside. We're going fishing. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Yep. Right there on the shelf where he's supposed to be. Watch this. Here we go. Here we are, boys and girls. Here we are, boys. Oh, he's pulling it.
All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I told y'all we were going to catch one, and we did. All bees, baby. We all about that big bag. This goes 2024. Hope we'll weigh in a ton of them next year. That's it. We out. <laughs>